Oh man, she went to the screen. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, hello everyone. Take two. Good morning, good afternoon. No, take three. One more time. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello and everybody. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Today we're painting, uh, we're going to continue work on our little TIE Fighter diorama. If you joined us a couple weeks ago, um, I was playing around with a little X-Wing uh, TIE Fighter. Thought it'd be fun to make a little diorama. I showed you how to use some like uh, wood bark and some driftwood, dry it up, uh, carve it in shape and just make a little fun diorama. And today we're going to paint it. And we also sculpted a Jawa in like 15 minutes, which was ridiculous. I, I compl completely can't believe I did that. Uh, but uh, sometimes I even surprise myself. Um, so today we're going to paint up. I got a couple colors out and I think we're going to go with like a blue shadow and some red tones to the rocks. And then if we get to it, we'll do the uh, TIE Fighter and Java. We'll just see where we're going today. Just paint with jazz and just making it up. It's the first day back from uh, from kind of a kind of a little staying at home time. So I'm a little wasn't quite ready. Blah, 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 blah. So let's kick it to the mid cam. I Typhon Belly Runner Tear Tearfon Tearfon Belly Runner. I'm just gonna call you Belly Runner. Thanks, I am having a great day. There we got there. So you can see we got our little TIE Fighter. Am I blocking it? Our little TIE Fighter diorama is all primed up and ready to go. I got some colors out, I got some reds and browns, and we're just gonna have fun, and we're just gonna start mashing paint. Um, I don't, that one's a little stiff bristled, so we're gonna use something a little less. So I got some oranges and browns, some tan. If, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm painting and I feel like I need something else, we'll switch and grab something. I don't really have a plan. We're just seeing what happens. We're just having fun. See where the art takes us. Mm -hmm -hmm. Oh, I think that's I think that's trademark there. Release. That's how, that's how we get in trouble. That's how we get in trouble. I don't want to get in trouble. So you can see I kind of used the zenith to kind of guide. I'm making really thin paint here. And I want it to kind of taper out in the dark zones because that's where our shadows are going to be. So we're going to make those a little more blue. Have you ever driven through, Summer, have you ever driven through the desert? Not really. Not really. I've driven through the desert and, um, you know, growing up, I grew up where there was no desert. Um, and so the first time I went to the desert, um, there's that sort of notion, it's just like, it's nothing but rocks. There ain't nothing to see there. And I drove through the desert of uh, Nevada, New Mexico, Texas, Arizona. And uh, I kind of fell in love with it. The colors are really beautiful and unique and so i think i i think i want to kind of channel that here um when the shadows start to fall in the open desert you get these like lovely purples some magentas and blues so i think i think bringing that to our little tie fire diorama might be fun Sometimes it's just about taking a memory and playing on the idea, making it your own, kind of telling that story in a new way, drawing on those real life experiences to kind of guide your hand. I'm just going to hit the back a little bit because that's going to be more purple and stuff, but we want that little bit of red on the back. Can you see that? I might need to move over a little bit. 
Nutana One. Uh, there is no AMG staff going to Adepticon. Um, I was super excited. I had I, I did actually have tickets and and I was planning on going. Um, and then um, with a lot of the current um, global pandemic situation, uh, we kind of decided um, at the last minute to sort of not go ourselves. Um, my partner and I just didn't, didn't quite feel comfortable. So, but there's no atomic mass staff will be in attendance at Adepticon. Hopefully next year. Hopefully next year. I want to go next year because missing this many years in a row has made me sad. Um, I think Adepticon's a fantastic show. Put on by a good friend of mine, Hank Italy, and. It's a lot of fun um, getting to hang out and do some painting in the the paint area. And all the events are always fun. And I know we got a lot of fun events for all the games that Atomic Mass uh, produces. So I'm excited to sit back and watch some streamy goodness, goodness come from uh, the Adepticon this year. Uh, Nickel City actually came. I need anything from Chicago. I need something from Chicago. Can I can can I can I say what I want from Chicago? You're gonna let me say it. You're gonna let me say it. If somebody would get me some Molly's cupcakes. There's a cupcake there called the Ron Bennington. It is the best cupcake in the world. It's like chocolate and like uh, butter, like a uh, not butterscotch, but like. There's caramel and like I think, I think Butterfingers are mixed into it. It's it's the best cupcake in the world. It's the best cupcake in the world. Just just the best cupcake in the world. <laughs> now I can't stop thinking about a Ron Bennington. Also, Is it a yeah yeah out here. Oh, no no Molly's. Yeah, I gotta go Molly's. Sorry. Look, I'm, I'm, yeah. I was having this discussion the other day, um, and I, I'm a person that doesn't really like saying my favorite of anything. Like, what's your favorite song? I don't know, because I have too many like emotional connections to different songs. And what's your favorite movie? Well, I don't know. Am I feeling melancholy? Am I feeling philosophical? Am I feeling like in a really goofy fun mood? Because then it changes. Favorite, like all. I don't like having favorites because I like having experiences and being open to experiences. So I was actually talking about this uh, to my uh, partner being like, I, ho I never want to, I want to train myself to not say, um, you know, unsolicited, like what my favorite food is or, you know, in the context here, I guess is more like if I'm sitting there eating lunch with you, like say, say, say we go out for lunch. And um, we're having, um, let's say, sushi. And in my mind, I'm like, this is the best sushi I've ever had. And then you come in and you're like, mm, this isn't the best sushi I've ever had. You're just messing with my experience. And it's really rude. Like, it's just really rude. Like, unless I, unless after we're done, I'm like, man, that was good. What was the best sushi you've ever had? And you're like, oh, let me tell you about this place I went to. All right, I want to hear about that. But like, just unsolicited, like out the gate, man, that makes me so angry. So I'm trying to be mindful about that stuff myself. Yeah, I want I want to have experiences, and I don't want them marred or, you know, by, you know, the best. Like, you know, even even like the best, you know. Let's say the best, the best tacos I ever had. I don't, I don't want to think about the best tacos I ever had because the, I'm, I'm getting ready to have tacos, and now I'm like going to be disappointed because it's not the best. Like, I, I try to have the best today. Like, it's like when I tell people, "What's my favorite painting miniature I ever saw?" It's the one you just finished. You know, let's have some experiences. That's me though. 
You know, you, you just gotta yell at me. I'm all over the place. I'm a loose cannon. Let's add some brown. Let's add some brown. It is, right? It is quite lovely. And especially around sunset time. Yep. They are quite the sight to behold. I mean, look, I'm I'm the person that stood on the edge of the Grand Canyon and got tears in my eyes. Quite lovely. Quite lovely. Uh, da, da, da. Chicago Force excited about Adepticon. I'm excited. I'm seriously. I'm ser I'm excited about Adepticon as well. I'm not I'm sad. I'm not going. Adepticon is a super great show. Um, just wasn't in the cards this year. And that's just the way it works, and that's okay. There's always next year. I've already. I've already received some updates and some pictures and even a video call from Adepticon. So I'm expected to stay, stay, I'm expecting I'm going to end up being pretty informed the whole time about what's going on. I, got, I just need somebody to walk me through the vendor hall. So I'm going to have to ask a, a buddy of mine there if they'll walk me through the vendor hall. Do that digital tour. And of course the paint area. I need to see all my friends at the paint area. So we're doing a little brown, but we're gonna put some blue in that here in a little bit. I just wanna get that kind of beginning layer. Now this might take a couple layers because this is bark, even though I glued Put layers and layers of glue on it. It might take a little bit to get that to really build up. Okay, let's let that dry for a little bit. Let's see if we can start working on our TIE fighter. What we got up here? Painting question. Uh, black crackle paint over lava colors. The finish probably feels a little too dark on top. Uh, bring, I would have to see it released to, to, to know exactly what it looks like. Um, I use crackle paste from, um, you can get it from like any hobby store, like, um, like the, like the generic hobby stores, like craft stores, you can get crackle paste. I think Martha Stewart makes a version that's really good. Um, and you can do it, like you either need to go back through and like, Throw a little, little something down in the crevices, or, or maybe you're talking about the black itself, like dry brush it. I'd have to see a picture, so I'm not really sure where, what we're talking about. I said there's always next year after deciding not to go in 2019. Well, I don't think anybody went in 2019. Oh, no, no, yeah. 2019 was the last one. Till now, there's always next year. There's always next year. You know, and sometimes you just gotta do other stuff in life. You know, it's kind of where I decided this year. I was like, you know, I gotta do other stuff. I gotta do some other things and. There's always next year. So this is a little lighter than it's supposed to be, but I'm gonna do a wash. This doesn't gotta be perfect. We're just making a little diorama. It's 
not even for competition. This is for my enjoyment. The only person this has to impress is me. And when it comes to my own stuff, my bar is pretty low. Like for my stuff, my stuff, I, I like, I mean, even for competition stuff, I like emotion and story, drama. But it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't have to think about how the light's affecting things or I want to focus on just my little story and it, it can be as cool as I want it to be. It can be as messy as I want it to be. doesn't matter. It's mine. Is my head in the way? No. Boop, boop. We're going to wash that down here. As this dries, uh, do I have an opinion on using art pens for miniatures? I'm considering buying some thin colored artist pens. I don't know. I mean, whatever, the the right tool for the job is what I say, right? You know, what, what did we say a couple weeks ago, Summer? Like, you don't try to, you don't try to put a 16 penny nail into a wall with a screwdriver, right? So if it's, the, if it's, if, if you're not comfortable with freehanding with a brush and you feel more comfortable with a micro pen, get out a micro pen. It's just a tool. I'm going to mix something up while I pontificate. Um, it's just a tool. It's just another tool in the toolbox and there's no cheating in art. It's, um, you know, it's like an airbrush. It's just another tool in the toolbox. Um, you know, it takes a skill set that you have to learn. It takes, um, some, um, education and correct application to make an airbrush actually work super good for you. So... If, if a micron pen works, you get that micron pen out and you give it a go. Let's do a dry brush. This will probably consist of several dry brushes and washes to get the rock the way we want it. You just slowly, we're slowly building up some value. Resin on top of paints to give a depth. Yeah, you can do that. There's lots of videos of that. Um, lots of videos of that technique. You can paint like something on one layer of resin and then pour another layer of resin on top. It gives it more depth. You can totally do that. Yeah, fi spike fire spew. That's, that's right. That's absolutely correct. There's no wrong tool or technique if it gives you the result you're happy with. And that's what it's about, you know. You know, we're not talking about competition painting today. That's a different philosophy. But painting for ourselves, painting for a table, you're really just trying to make make something you're happy with. And I think that should be like kind of the first and foremost idea. Um, you know, if you're painting for competition, that philosophy kind of changes a little bit, of course, because you have somebody judging you. You have you have a judge looking at something with the way they look at art so they're going to look at art a little different um but for yourself it's that's for you All these paints are absolutely just wet right now. <laughs> I'm literally getting not as much done as I thought I would. I need the blow dryer. Do we got the blow dryer in here? Oh, I see the cord. Boom! Yeah, my favorite donut is a free one. I mean... 
Yeah. Yeah, it kind of just automatically, like, I mean, let, let's be real. Like, you can call me anything you want, just don't call me late for dinner. Right? Hang on, I'm going to make a note. I'm, I'm making, make, make, are you muted? I'm going to mute him. Okay, ready? Three. We're back. All right, we dried our paint just a little bit. Hopefully that wasn't too tedious. I think we want a little yellow in this. Oh, do we not have the, we didn't bring the whole pokers in here. Blimey, let's just pick a different yellow. Let's pick a different yellow. I'm not a picky person. Yeah, soul. A little yellow in there. Mix that up, dry that off. So it's just a little yellow on that sun side. And the yellow is going to give a nice contrast to our purple and when we start putting purples in the shadows. Yellow and purple are opposite on the color wheel. This isn't super yellow. I desaturate with like a like a warm like a lovely warm skin tone. Sometimes I use skin tones for all kinds of different things. Just because a paint's labeled for skin or not for skin, that doesn't mean it can't be used for it. There's so many lovely skin tones out there and try to I try to always play in the realm of variety and visual interest and so bringing, bringing those colors up to the front and using them, it's always nice. A little highlight, sub-highlight. This will be purpled out once again. The idea will be purple shadows. But you want like a little reflection back here. Once that purple goes over it, those will get toned down a little bit. Um, I want a little bit more pop to this, like especially on those upper levels. Uh, different question, do you ever create something and it ends up as card art for a game? Not sure I understand the question release. I mean, we create card art all the time. Oh, I've, I mean, I, I, I do, I, I, I'm in the pitch ideas for card art process. That's part of my job. And the, um, the astral ring in the convocation, like that's something I drew and then we turned it over to an artist and they turned it into an actual real piece of art based off my doodle. Making a mess and just 
slapping some paint all over the place and it doesn't really matter because no one's going to see the back. Oh, like this? I don't know. Maybe someday we'll put a miniature on some card art. Could be fun. Could be a neat promo idea. We need some purples. I have to talk to Preston. Preston's the uh, art director for the Star Wars games. Super cool cat. And you can hear him at some of the mini extravaganza panels. Discussing sweet art stuff. We're just real thin glaze. It's like purpley blue. To some shadowy areas. Yeah, the the wood holds the paint much different than plastic. Um, you know, every material, like, you know, if you look at miniature materials, you got metal, resin, plastic, soft plastic. Um, they all kind of react a little different from time to time to different um, to paints. Um, wood definitely is so porous. Um, it just reacts super differently. So I'm just kind of adjusting and kind of accepting that it's, it's a little weird and we're just working our way through it. And, hoping for the best and it'll just take some layers to get that a nice look that we want now sometimes that's what art is it's just you know what do we say refine and define we're just refining and defining but look at that purple and do you like that purple in there it looks really good right I'm starting to get those Mm-hmm. And that's why I wanted to do those dry brushes, right? Like, so we've thrown that base layer and we build up some coats and then we throw a couple washes on to start building some depth and then you start building out that texture over again and you push it down with some dry washes and you bring it back. So you can just kind of go back and forth with wash and dry brush to kind of get that perfect texture that you're looking for. You know, we're just making art. We're just making art. They call me Bald Ross. I want to go a little bit heavier on my blue on this back side. I want that nice, real heavy blue on the, on the back here. Still maintain a little bit of that black in there. It's very dark shadows. Like I was saying, when you go through the desert, it's, it's, there's just some wonderful contrast that happens uh, when you're driving through the desert. So the blacks are like these, you know, there's like really rich blacks and then these like lovely purples and blues that happen in that mid shadow. So usually I paint with reference. Today I'm just, I'm painting with my heart and my memory. I'm 
and the back doesn't matter as much. No one's going to see the back, but I want, I want, I want to give it like, if you see it in the case at like a funny angle, you can see that blue. I just want to give that hint and touch. What are we talking about here? Uh, in my own painting news, I finally got around to assembling and painting the AA5 Spirit Truck, and it's been an entirely enjoyable experience. Yeah, I love that thing. It's a, I have yet to paint one, um, but the miniature looks super cool, and I think you could do some really fun stuff with that miniature. Um, in the past, with people who have won worlds, have gotten to come up with the idea for an upgrade pilot. Knowledge with that. I have no idea if I, I do have no knowledge of that. I have no knowledge of that. You're asking the wrong cat. Put some blue down in this. So this knot is a natural knot of the wood. Um, and, I'm, and I thought it'd be fun to kind of bring the painting into the upper part of that and then let it fade into the natural wood to kind of let the piece blend together. So that's what I'm doing there. I'm kind of creating that natural um, transition between painted and unpainted. And so it'll be really fun to kind of blend this together and get that, that look I want. I think it needs a little more magenta. Am I in the wrong spot? Oh no, I just asked what we needed a closer look. This is the benefit of being here is you get to come have closer looks if you need. So we're just gonna do like a little tiny that little bit of magenta. I love working with magentas. I try to utilize them in a lot of my painting when I can. Is mixing primary color paints a good way to get different colors or is it better to buy separate paints that are as close to the specific colors you want? Oh, this goes down to preference. Um, I'm definitely a mixer of paints. Um, I mean, I, uh, we use on the stream sometimes the Chimera set. That's literally like what, eight, 10, 10 paints. Um, and the honest answer is you don't need more than the, those eight paints. Um, because everything else, everything is just derivative of those colors because you can just mix it. Um, Sometimes I like having a pre-made, like this is the color. Sometimes I like mixing it. I'm also a big fan of close enough is good enough when it comes to art. So I don't super worry about making things perfect when I'm trying to get color matching. Because most of the time, the eye can't tell the difference if you get close enough. And there's also some interesting cheats. I taught, I taught Tony a cheat on... Uh, paint matching the other day and he he was very upset with me that he did not think about what I was teaching him. So we're just really kicking up those blues and magentas now. So I guess the answer is you know, kind of what you feel comfortable with, you know. I have a ton of paints. I use a ton of paints. And sometimes I just get in there and make stuff up. Um, my, my teaching philosophy is, um, for, for several years, my teaching philosophy has not been, I don't want to teach you what to paint. I want to teach you how to paint. And the idea there is if I just teach you a recipe, right? If I'm just like, 
put one drop of this and one drop of this and then this is your shadow. You're not understanding the whys, but, you, but you're doing. And that's, that's fine, but that's not the role I personally want to take. I think everybody has a little artist in them, no matter what you think. And I think you can learn to tap that to whatever level you're comfortable with and you want to put the time in for. So I'd rather teach you how to paint. Like, let's put this color here and why? Like, why are we putting this blue and this magenta in here? Because those go good against that yellows. Those, those are contrasting colors. And it doesn't have to be precise. We're just, we're just making it look cool. I think rule of cool is a forgotten rule sometimes. See how much life that's starting to pick up? It's coming together. You can see the desert in your mind. Mm -hmm. And maybe we only get through the rocks today. I don't know. We'll see what happens. You can always have a part three. Yeah, a lot of those like high pigment washes that are being released now are pretty nice. Um, and they, they do work. You can also mix those kind of yourself to some extent. Um, I love a good high pigment wash. I love washes, just in general. That's how I try to teach people to paint, is like, utilize those washes. They are fantastic tools to get a job done. This needs to be dark. Originally, I painted my paint. It doesn't come out smooth, but after adding some water, it turned out better. Is it always a good idea to water your paint, or do I just need to mix my paint better? Uh, I would have to see the paint. That's a really tough question to answer without, like, visual, like, understanding. Um, gut check is... I don't like to use the word always, <laughs> first off. Always add water to your paint, except for these times when you don't, um, you know, because the thing about art is there's rules, right? There's rules, um, and the, 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 best, the best reason to learn the rules is then you can learn how to break the rules. Um, I mean, that's just about life in general, right? Um, but... There's, there's always a time when the, the rule doesn't matter and you can break it. So I don't want to say always add water to your paint, but unless you're dry brushing, and even then, there's, a, there's an argument to be made adding a little drop of water um, to your paint. It helps, it helps open it up and get the paint moving and become more lively. I, I don't. I digress. I don't. I don't like using the words always. Because lo and behold, there's going to be some paint stream, and I'm not going to do it. And somebody's going to be like, "You didn't do the thing you said you always do." And I'm going to be like, "Yeah, well, in this case." And they're going to be like, "Well, why didn't you teach me that?" I'm like, "Because you teach in intervals. Like, you can't. You if you, if you don't know how to ride a bike, you're not going to learn how to ride a moped. Then you're not going to learn how to ride a motorcycle. Then you're not going to learn how to do." six stunts off the top of your dad's roof on the motorcycle and totally boff it and break a bone. I'm not saying I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking with experience. You know what? I, you know what? I, <laughs> Officer Dallas told me to write, see, this is what happens every time. Uh, 
Uh, excuse me. Uh, do you know why I pulled you over? Uh, yeah, officer. Dallas told me to break rule. Who is Dallas? And why does he matter? No, the answer is he doesn't. Sorry. Yeah. I strongly suggest putting a little water in your paint. You can see I'm always like getting a little dip of water. It's a little dip. It just opens up the paint and lets it become more um, active, I think is a good term. That whole area needs to dry a little bit more. We're just putting in some little shadows. All right, let's go back to our... Add a tiny mouse droid to this? Huh. The, a mouse droid is super tiny. I will say, if I do it on stream today, Or if you don't see me do it, how about this? If you don't see me do it on stream today, there is a 0% chance it will happen later. And I mean a strong zero. Maybe, maybe on another project we'll see, we'll get, we'll add a mouse droid. Can you see, is my head in the way or anything? So the whole backside of this tie is absolutely unpainted. That's okay. We're just going to shove some blue on top. Yeah. Mini Stravaganza coming up in June. Going to be so much fun. We got so much to talk about, so much to show. I'm excited for it all. That's my Mini Stravaganza song. Let's see. Let's add a little mat. Can we see? He's so wee. <laughs> We're just going to pop his little highlights out just a little bit. What teeny? They have real dark bandoliers. <laughs> He's so tiny. I mean, I think there's some rocks on the base that are literally bigger than him, so. He's not the right color yet, but we'll get there. I gotta go back behind him a little bit. He's so wee. I can't. I can't remember who it was. Somebody in the studio asked how I was gonna put the eyes in the in him, and I was like, "What are you? What is wrong with you?" No. Who would do that? I mean, maybe we will. Is this a diorama? Is it art? Yes, this is a, just a little miniature diorama we made up for uh, out of a little TIE fighter. Thought it'd be a little fun. 
a couple weeks ago we built it up their bats a couple weeks ago we painted it or we built it today we're going to start painting it up i don't think we're going to finish by any means what am i doing My stupid big noggin's always in the way. Oh, he's starting to stand out. Um, ba -ba -ba -bum. I need like a... Um, I don't want that color. I don't think that's metallic. I think this is just a copper color, so that might be worth it. Might do what we want. Oh, that's not been shaken. We won't use that. <laughs> Tia Mad Orange. And some of this white. What is the story behind it? the story behind why we did a diorama or the story of the diorama? Just the slightest touches with the brush. So, so I'm a big, I am a big proponent of letting the viewer kind of interpret the story to some extent. Like I need to tell the story, but leave some interpretation. So I imagine, I don't know where the TIE fighter come from. I don't know. But this lone little Jawa it was sent up on this rocky crag for generations. And Jawas were always just like, someday we're going to harvest the parts. And they were like, no, it's too impossible. And this one little Jawa said, it'll be I. I who will harvest the parts. And now he's up here and he doesn't know how to get the parts back down. But you can tell your story. I'm curious what you see. What do you see when you look at the... When you look at this, this little TIE fighter Jawa story. Do you see one lone tenacious Jawa like I do? Oh, he was kicked out. He's kicked out of Jawa society. He's the lone Jawa. He's just living on the edge of society. Totally got a head song in my head. But we're on Twitch, so I can't sing it. Put a little black in there. Then we can use that purple, blue. I'll touch a brown to do some shading on this side. Okay, maybe we can paint his eyes in there. I don't know. 
Maybe that's ridiculous. A little more white. Look at that little Jawa! All right, I think we can make a wash now. Blue, black. The slightest little bit of blue though. Remember, uh, blue is a uh, bully color. I took a paint class a couple years ago and the teacher called. And I'm, I'm sure it's been said before, but the teacher said bully color. And I was like, that's such an appropriate way to phrase blue kind of just bullies itself into everything if you put even the slightest drop in. Um, maybe a touch of brown in there. It's like blue, black, brown wash mixed together. That might be a little too brown now, so counter with some blue. Just a touch though. How much time we got? Five minutes? Oh, you kids, kids better get your questions in. I'm going to remind everybody that every Tuesday and Wednesday you can check out some fun painting here at Twitch with Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Will Schick was painting. I missed yesterday's. I was, was a little under the weather. Um... So I missed the stream yesterday. Um, but every Tuesday and Wednesday, you can check us out here on Twitch. You can catch up on some um, painting and hanging out, which is always fun to do. And then eventually we'll get back to Thursdays at 1 p.m. We'll be doing some live stream with some games, which is always fun. I feel like I owe Josh a game. I don't know why I feel that way, but I'm pretty sure I owe Josh a game. And then, for all the latest news, information, and announcements from Atomic Mass, you can check us out on Twitter and Instagram. That's where all the best stuff comes from. Information about releases, information about upcoming streams, information about Adepticon, which is happening in like tomorrow, Gen Con, Mini Stravaganza. And hopefully, we will see all of you at one or all of those. I'm just going to keep painting to the very end. We don't even have to kick it back to the other camera. We can just keep painting, because now I'm trying to get... Just trying to get these wings. Did I play Badger? My voice and cadence is perfect. I've, I've never watched that show. I have to go check it out. I hope this isn't an insult. Is this an insult? Are my feelings going to be hurt? It's kind of hard to hurt my feelings. Now we're getting that TIE Fighter look in there. We're just going to do a wash. I'm going with the more gray TIE Fighters, a couple of different colors of TIE Fighters, usually like grays or bluish gray. I'm going to go with like this gray because it'll look, it'll look nice and stark against our uh, backdrop here. I 
And this will, of course, be all weathered back up. Of course. Did I draw my idea first, or did I just wing it for the diorama? Um, I kind of just winged it for the diorama. I just kind of... Uh, I, had, I did a couple of tests with some broken TIE Fighter bits um, on this piece of, piece of wood um, and turned the wood several times, tried other pieces of wood, like I tried it like this, tried it like this, um, just using some blue tack. Um, these rocks weren't there at first. There was different rocks. Um, then I started, I sent it to, I sent a picture to a friend and they reminded me of some compositional rules, so I made the rocks bigger. And then I just started playing with it and just making sure it all fit. And just, so it was a whole lot of like, just figuring it out as I went along um, until I glued it all into place and real heavy putties and stuff like that got it to stick. And um, everybody keeps asking what these ropes are for. And I don't really have an answer. Um, it's definitely rule of cool kind of thing. I think it just adds to to it and like maybe they're like tie down ropes for like the, the little Jawa to like hold it up and keep it from falling off the cliff side. I, I just think it looks cool and adds to, it just adds more to the visual, not necessarily the story. It's like, it's like secondary philosophy. It, it, it doesn't detract from the story, but it doesn't add to the story. It's just, it's just visually interesting. It's just visual interest. It's just gribble. Yeah, see, like Summer thinks that's where he hangs his uh, his little Jawa boxers. So, you know, everybody's got their little story, and I just like it was just more like playing with shapes and form and just giving giving something like especially here. I love the way this line cuts, and this will look better when it's painted. But the way this line cuts over, because your eye starts here at this bottom, um, you know. Typically here in the West, we read from left to right. So from left to right, we're going this way. Everything points this way, but then this wing kind of juts to the side, opposite, and then this cuts that path off. So I think it just adds like some interesting stuff. And then these lines, of course, follow that same down, left, up, right motion. So it's just just playing with ideas and stuff. Yeah, Jawa Laundry. Some someday Atomic Mass will open a laundry service called Jawa Laundry. Who knows? All right, I think that's it for today. It's 2 o'clock. I'm waiting for everything to dry because it's wet as heck. So um, I guess we'll see you on Tuesday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Mr. Will Schick. And next Wednesday, you'll catch me back here for more painting. And then, of course, every, um, as I said, Twitter and Instagram for all the latest news information announcements. So until next time, we'll catch you later. And go be the hero you want to be. And now we play the actro music. And I realize I'm up there on the screen until I just started looking at the camera. I'm like, what do I know? I'm not professional. <laughs>